So a lot of fishermen are gonna remember the tuna season of 2022 as an all time, one of the best seasons in their memory. I will not be remembering it that way. I have had a bit of a struggle of a tuna season. I've been on some excellent trips where all the fishermen around me caught fish and I did not. So finally, I was out there with Chris Megan and Anthony DeCicci fishing east of Cape Cod. There was a great tuna jigging bite happening in about 240, 250 feet of water and it was first light and I dropped down and I hooked up and it was the right size tuna. Now the issue out there has been you'd hook you know, multiple tuna a trip, but a lot of them would be over 80 inches. So you'd have a real handful. You were looking for those fish under 73 inches that you keep recreationally and, uh, and take home and eat. And this felt like one of those fish that was more in the 45 to 50 inch range. And uh, I thought this was it. So I'm gonna break my tuna slump. I fought it about halfway to the boat and the rod broke. Oh, I was down, but I wasn't out. Okay, so I continued fighting it on half a rod. Finally, just in the pre-dawn light, I saw the flash of color. The tuna was there about 20 feet down, and then my half a rod snapped straight, and, and the fish was gone. Now, I thought maybe I broke it off, but I felt the weight of the jig on there. I thought maybe the hook had pulled, but when I brought it into the boat, I saw I still had the jig, I still had all my rigging, but the assist hook was gone. It was completely gone. Now, what hadn't necessarily chafed through, that's something that will happen with occasionally. Tuna have very small teeth that during the course of a long fight, they act like a saw, whether it's on the leader itself or on the assist hook cord. But this one, it just seemed like it was an inferior assist hook cord, just kind of gave way and, uh, and cost me my fish. So losing fish like that is one of those things that puts you to the drawing board, makes you want to learn how to do some of those things yourself. Now, I'd never thought about making some of my own jigging assist hooks before that day. It turns out it's not a difficult thing to do and it helps you really adjust your assist hook to the jig you're using, to the fish you're targeting, so you have the best possible hardware there to help you land that tuna and eventually uh, break any tuna slumps you might be experiencing. Now you can buy your own assist hooks. You can buy them pre-rigged. A lot of jigs, including the Shimano Shimmerfall right here, come pre-rigged with them. But these aren't always ideal for the, the fish that you're targeting here. This hook looks great for, let's say, mid-sized tuna, 40 inch, 50 inch tuna, yellowfin tuna. But for these big bluefin that we've been seeing out east of Cape Cod this season, this hook is a little bit small for my liking. And I know it's small for my liking because I straightened out one of these hooks on a, uh, on a big bluefin on that same day that I lost, uh, lost the one in the story I started this video with. So I like to customize the assist hook to better fit this jig here. So this might be great as I said, for smaller tuna, for these bigger ones we're seeing on Cape Cod this season, I definitely want to beef up the hook. Now you can buy the pre-rigged assist hooks and they're great. You know, they have a variety of lengths, hook sizes, but if uh, you're a frugal angler like myself or you really like to customize your tackle to the jig and to your fishery, this is the way to go. And it also allows you to fully customize not only the length of your assist hook, but also the hook style, the, uh, you could even go down to dressing the hook if you wanted to put some, say, a rubber skirt on there or put some mylar um, flash into this. But for this video, we're just going to be doing a bare bones, basic heavy duty assist hook for targeting anything from, let's say, 40 to 50 inch tuna to 90 inch and above bluefin tuna. So the gear you'll need to make your own assist hook is, first and foremost, you need a hook. Right now I'm using the VMC, these are their wide gap live bait hooks. And they also recommend these for jigging assist hooks. So the qualities you want in a hook are a nice wide gap like that because you want something that's gonna take purchase in the corner of a tuna's mouth when it bites. You want it to be heavy duty, so we've got a very heavy gauge hook right here. It's gonna handle a big fish, you know, handle 100, 200, even 300 pound and beyond fish. And uh, two, you want a nice slightly curved back eye right there. So you see that the eye is just slightly offset and that's going to help you when you finally rig that hook to get it seated perfectly as you're jigging. Next, you're going to need the cord, the assist hook cord. This is Kevlar cord that I picked up on Amazon. Now they do have a cord that you can buy at specialty bait and tackle shops like Jigging World. Our friends over there make a Kevlar assist cord you can buy. That's at red. I happen to buy this at Amazon. I got a hundred yards of it and they do come in multiple pound tests. So I have two different sizes here. I've got 250 pound test and then 550 pound test. 
Now, the 250 pound test is probably gonna be okay for most of your tuna jigging. In fact, when I made my first round of assist hooks, I was using the 250 pound test and I did finally break my slump on a beautiful 72, 73 inch fish that we released on that 250 pound Kevlar jigging cord, but it had nearly chafed through uh, throughout the fight. So going forward, I'm gonna be bumping up, especially when targeting big bluefin tuna to this 550 pound cord. That's what uh, Captain Don Petrarca uses when he makes his own uh, jigging assist hooks. And if it's good enough for Dom, it's, uh, it's definitely good enough for me. So I bought two of the 100 foot spools of this Kevlar cord. So I'm probably gonna get enough assist hooks out of this to last me the next three or four seasons with the amount that I go tuna fishing. Uh, depending on how often you tuna fish, should be enough to last you for the entire season. After that, you're going to need a piece of shrink tubing, heat shrink tubing. Now this is, for most of what I'm using, I found that the quarter inch shrink tube with a three to one rate of, uh, of constriction, that's gonna be the best. Now the, the function that this plays is it covers up that knot to assist your hook. It gives you a little extra chafe protection against those tuna teeth, helps keep your knot in place and gives a little bit of rigidity to the hook. Now some fishermen say that's not necessary, but it doesn't take long to do. It's an extra layer of protection against losing a fish, so I think it's well worth doing. After all that, you're going to need a solid ring, and this is what going, you're going to eventually loop your assist hook cord onto. And this solid ring is going to be what you use your split ring pliers to attach your jig to, and this is going to be your direct connection to the fish. So we talked a lot about assist hooks, but we didn't talk about why you use them. The reason fishermen use assist hooks when jigging is that it gives you a direct connection to the fish you're fighting. You know, if you were to put the jig, say, think of a traditional diamond jig that has the hook on the back, the bottom of the jig like this. When you're fighting a fish, this entire jig is going to be moving around. It's going to be, the fish is going to be able to use it as leverage to, uh, to remove the hook. So with a bluefin tuna or a yellowfin tuna, they're really going to exploit those advantages. They're big, strong fish. And uh, if you have this jig in play, it's going to, over the course of a long fight, more likely for the hook to pull out, for the fish to use this to its advantage, the jig as leverage to uh, bend the hook and escape. So the assist hook takes that jig out of the equation when you're fighting the fish. So it gives you, you can see, here's the leader in my left hand, here's the hook in my right hand, and you have a direct connection to the tuna as you're fighting it without this jig being in the way. So as the tuna fights, he's not gonna be able to use that jig so much to shake the hook out. It's gonna give you a more secure hook set because when that tuna hits it, Generally, it's going to take the bait over from behind and you're going to get a nice solid hook set with this big single hook, ideally right in the latch of the tuna's jaw. And that's going to give you a chance to hang on to that fish for a good long time, long enough to get it into range to either gaff or to unhook and release. So when selecting the size of the jigging hook, you want to take into account the size jig you're using. So you wanna make sure that your hook does not at all get stuck along the body of the jig. So you want a hook that's got a wider gap than the jig you're using. Next step, you're going to wanna to decide how far down you want this hook to sit on the jig. Generally, about one third to one half of the way down is going to be the best for tuna fishing. So for this particular jig, this is the Shimano Shimmerfall, the 170 gram size. I'm gonna want a length of the Kevlar cord that's gonna go about halfway down. Once it's all tied and said and done, I want that hook to go between a third to a halfway down the bait. Now, because this line is so bulky and because the knot ends up being pretty bulky, when I do my initial loop here, when I double the line back, I'm gonna want it to be a little bit longer than what I'm hoping the end product will be. So I've taken out, this is about actually about three quarters of the length of the jig as opposed to a half but when I cinch it down, it's, uh, it'll, we'll end up seeing you'll, you'll have closer to that, that length that I'm looking for. Now for this particular jig, I'm gonna use the size 110 VMC wide gap live bait hook. Okay, I like this size because one, nice wide gap, I'm not worried about the jig itself getting caught on the hook and uh, nice and sharp, heavy duty for those larger fish that we've been seeing out east. And the knot itself, I thought it was gonna be a pretty complicated knot making these assist hooks. You know, you're, these are your connection to some very large fish. So I thought, you know, naturally it was gonna be something uh, 
complicated, but really it's just your basic uni knot. So it's going to take the line like this, make a loop around the shank of the hook right there, okay? And I'm gonna pass the end here through that loop once, okay? Then I'm gonna pass it through one more time. And that's it. So when I go to cinch it down, I'm going to not just pull it tight, but kind of work the, the knot down towards so I get it close to that tag end there. So just working it down before I tighten it up. That way it'll give you closer to that one third to one half of the jig length. So the knot there is looking pretty good. Cinched it up, I like the length. Last step for me is going to be pushing it through the eye of the hook right there. And then I'm gonna pull this all tight, put it up next to my jig, and that looks good. That's looking pretty good, so I'm gonna cut the tag end here. Most guys like to leave a bit of a tag end just because it's gonna prevent the knot from backing out. Once I put the uh, shrink tubing over it, you know, this will sit right here. It's gonna cover a lot of that, but I don't wanna cut it down too close to the knot because if you have the fish on there and it's working in this jaw, you don't want it backing out the hook at all. So a little bit of a longer tag end is not gonna be a problem right there. So there is more or less my finished assist hook. I've got two more steps. The first one is going to be adding the shrink tubing. So this is pretty simple. Just slide that onto the assist cord, just like that. And now it does get a little tricky when you're putting it over the hook. I like to slide the knot back down get the assist, uh, get the shrink tube over the eye of the hook. And that, that way, since it's so bulky, uh, trying to fit the assist hook cord over the knot and the eye of the hook at the same time can be difficult. So you're better off just sliding the knot down and doing that individually. So it might take a little bit of finessing and twisting to get the knot inside the shrink tube, but just keep working at it and you'll get it there. Sometimes I'll pull it up through, hold on to the jig tube. Now this shrink tubing was also, was another Amazon purchase. This is marine grade shrink tubing. And as I said, it is a quarter inch diameter here. And they're about one and a half inch lengths of tube. That's fine. You could cut it down if you wanted, but uh, I don't feel too strongly about that. So I'm gonna leave it at this length here. All right, so got this all set in there, and now I just need to apply the heat to get this to shrink onto there and hold everything in place. Now, you could use a blow dryer, you could use a heat gun. If you really wanted to, you could use a lighter. What I found the best way to do it is, is to put these into boiling water, and uh, that way I can do, you know, I can do a whole bunch of these and then put them all in at once. It helps me be more efficient when I'm rigging all these assist hooks. And uh, two, the boiling water gives you a more even distribution of heat. So it's applying heat to the entire shrink tubing at once, as opposed to say a hair dryer where you might be going back and forth and it might heat it unevenly. I just microwaved this water here at the office. You know, it's not as ideal as using it at home, but I'm gonna drop the shrink tubing in. I can see it tightening up there around the knot around the cord itself. I'll leave that in there for just you know, about 30 seconds to a minute. And uh, after that, I just need to add my solid ring and that'll be ready to fish. All right, so that looks pretty good to me right there. It's tightened up around the knot. It's gonna protect that knot. Tightened up around the cord. Got to protect that from any unwanted chafing while I'm fighting a, uh, a bluefin tuna over a long period of time. So I'm going to take this solid ring. I'm going to loop this onto the line here. So this one is ready to go. I've got the heavy duty Kevlar cord. I have the heavy gauge wide gap VMC live bait hook, and I have a, a solid split ring at the top. I'm now confident that this will not be the weak point in my next battle with a big bluefin tuna. I'll get my split ring pliers and a split ring and rig this ahead of the shimmerfall jig right here, 
and that'll be ready to go for my next trip out to the tuna grounds.